Hi guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Office Bloke Daz. I'm Sophie. I'm Office Bloke Aiden. Just the three of us today. Gainer is uh, on holiday with Office Bloke Mike. <laughs> <laughs> nice got a nice time. Yeah, she's in, uh, she's come to York with Mike. No, um, she's, she's in, in London. She's in London today. London. Yeah. She's uh, gone to watch a show in London with her friends. Mm -hmm. So she's having a nice time. Ooh, she sent me, sent me a picture of her in the on the train with the beers. <laughs> Can, <laughs> cans on the train. Stella. <laughs> <laughs> London away. <laughs> Um, is that how she got there, the train? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, what this video is, uh, is the US Explained. Now, I know both of you are not really that uh, familiar with everywhere in the USA. No. Don't no. think anyone is. Um, but this is a <laughs> bit of an explanation state by state to give you some information about them states that you might not know. So There's probably a lot I won't know, to be probably honest. Probably a lot yeah, I won't know. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah? Mm. Right, let's, anyway, let's go for it. I get requests all the time from people in other countries. These are normally people that are thinking about moving to or just visiting the US, but might not know much about the country past the stats and the travel guide type things. Coming for work, they're coming for school, whatever the case may be. So today I thought we could just summarize each state in the nation to give them a brief look and some information about the Nifty 50. And if you don't know what that means, let's say you're from another country, we have 50 states. And one of the ways they help you remember that when you're like in elementary school is they give it that cute nickname, the Nifty 50. That's what we're doing today. Got it, get it, good. Let's take a look. Number 50, Alabama. Spanish explorers are believed to have arrived in Mobile Bay in 1519. Sometime later, the United States decided to go to the moon and Huntsville, Alabama is where they made the rockets to get us there. They also played a big role in the Civil War and for a long time and still a little bit to this day, they have a reputation for a little bit of racism like most of the Southern states. But they do have good people, great universities and plenty of things to do. Number 49, Alaska. Alaska is one of two states that don't share border with any other states. It is the largest state by area and the 48th by population. They don't have a lot of people. They have less than a million people living there, 736,000 to be exact. But because the state's so big, their population density is really low. They're ranked 50th in the nation. Alaska is known for its wilderness, its hunting and fishing, and cruise ship ports. Alaska is one of the few states that is hemorrhaging residents. Not a lot of people are moving to Alaska anymore. A lot of people are moving out. Number 48, Arizona. Arizona is a southwestern state. It is mostly desert, even though it does have some mountains and some hills and stuff. For the most part, it's known for its deserts. Some spectacular scenery though, isn't they? When you look at, Ar when you look at uh, Alaska there, and then you look at Arizona, just looks like it's like it looks like the opposite sides of the world, doesn't it? Does, it? Doesn't it? Yeah. It's the same yeah. country. Mm. One could have been like the moon, and the other one could be Mars. Yeah, you know, <laughs> exactly. like, yeah. two very different sort of like uh, landscapes, but it's mm. uh, spectacular, isn't it? When you look at it, that's why you know when people travel outside of the USA, um, and people go outside the USA, and they say Americans don't travel. You know, no one's got passports. People always say all the time yeah. to me, and I'm like, why would you? Mm. When you've got everything there, why would you want to go somewhere else? Mm. You know, we don't really, as, as Britons, you speak to most Brits. They only need a passport to go 200 miles away. You know what I mean? It's Holland or Belgium. Yeah. But a lot of them go, yeah. where, where do you go on holiday? Spain every year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and it's like, well, that's like going from England to Spain. It's like going from New Jersey to like bloody... Florida. Flor not even that. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Less than yeah. that to Georgia. Yeah. It gives you an idea. Yeah. If you, like, you just don't think how vast it is or I Just don't because know, it's different yeah. countries, you expect it to be further. Correct. Yeah, so. yeah. It's also known for its sunburn retirees and the Grand Canyon. It's also one of the four corner states. There's a point on the U.S. map where Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona all meet at four corners. Arizona is also surrounded by Nevada and California to the west and Mexico to the south. They have some pretty good universities here. 47, Arkansas. Arkansas is known as the natural state. It is beautiful. They have some amazing landscapes. They also have two of the most dangerous cities in the United States, Pine Bluff and Little Rock. Stay away from those and it's pretty good. I've said in many of my videos that the northwest corner of the state is a lot different than the rest of Arkansas. Arkansas doesn't have the best reputation. They're known for their hillbillies, their rednecks, and uneducated residents. They do have hillbillies and rednecks, but the uneducated part comes from way back and and it's really not like that anymore. They do have some good universities and not all their school districts are bad. Some of them are really, really good. If you like the outdoors, this is a great place. 
46, California. Everybody knows about California. This is where Hollywood is. This is where Silicon Valley is, Los Angeles, and some of the best beaches in the nation. It's also home to Yosemite, Disneyland, and SeaWorld. If you take New York, Florida, and Texas, and Massachusetts out of the equation, California makes more money than any 10 combined states. But the state is terribly expensive, and in a lot of areas, extremely overcrowded, with a serious homeless situation in Los Angeles and San Francisco. If you ever hear it called the Golden State, that's because they discovered gold there in the 1840s and had a gold rush through the late 1840s and 1850s. Number 45, Colorado. Colorado is known as the Centennial State because it became a state 100 years after the United States became a thing. It is known for its Rocky Mountains and its natural beauty. Colorado was sort of split in two. I was going to say, I feel like Colorado is probably the one with the best natural beauty, I reckon. Mm. It's definitely up there at least, but I've, I mean, I've never been, but I was, it's somewhere I'd want to go just to see what it looked like. we got friends mm. in Colorado. Oh, really? <clears throat> Darren and Kim. Oh, yeah? In Denver. Mm -hmm. Come and stay with them. Yep. <laughs> Why not? you'll hear people refer to the Western Slope, which covers Colorado's terrain west of the Continental Divide, where you'll find cities like Grand Junction, Montrose, and Delta. On the Front Slope, which is the east side of the Continental Divide, you'll find Colorado Springs, Denver, Boulder, places like that. Colorado has a lot of things to do, a lot of good jobs, a good military presence, including the Air Force Academy. 44, Connecticut. Connecticut is a New England state that is not too far north of New York City. A lot of the extremely wealthy people from New York City, let's say financiers, bankers, stuff like that, own homes in Connecticut. Connecticut is a strange state. You will find some of the richest neighborhoods and towns in Connecticut at the same time finding some of the worst poverty outside the Deep South. It's a really strange state. It's like they don't have much of a middle class. They got the uber wealthy and the tragically poor. But they do have a Ivy League school, Yale is in New Haven. Their biggest cities are Hartford and New Haven. 43, Delaware. Delaware is the first state. Yep, it was the first state admitted into the Union, and it is also the home of our current president, Joe Biden. Its capital city is Dover, and its largest city is Wilmington, which normally doesn't make the press unless it's something bad. They got a lot of crime going on in Wilmington. Beautiful and historic city, it's just got a whole bunch of crime and poverty right now. Delaware is kind of small and oddly shaped, and kind of hard to find if you don't know where it is. So if you're looking at a map and you see Philadelphia and Washington, D.C., it's in between there. Number 42, Florida. Florida is known as the Sunshine State because they get a lot of it. They also get a lot of hurricanes and they got alligators. Keep that in mind. They're also known for having a lot of cruise ships going in and out of there and for having Orlando where you will find all kinds of amusement parks, including Disney World. It also has amazing beaches. 41, Georgia. Just north of Florida, you have Georgia, known as the Peach State. Georgia is one of our southern states and its biggest city is Atlanta. They're also a state that has a big military presence. And these days, they've got a lot of political turmoil. A lot of stuff's going on there. So if you show up in the United States, you're gonna hear them a lot and it has to do with some weird political stuff that's been going on. Georgia also has one of the most beautiful cities we have here in the United States, Savannah. Number 40, Hawaii. The Aloha State. Did you know Aloha means hello? Spent a bit of time in Georgia with, uh, in Atlanta and um, Savannah. But you've been to Savannah, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, Is it nice? Yeah. Mm. I, d I only sort of like went for the day, though. It wasn't somewhere I spent, like, a, I don't know, like a, it wasn't a holiday. It was work. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure we um, we, we went into, because it was a support town, Savannah. Yeah. So we called it Savannah. Charleston was on, was on that same sort of trip as well, mm. in, like, the coast of the port. But, um, yeah, George is one of them, one of them states where... I've, I was, I'm very unsure which part is the is the part I'd want to go. Yeah. Because, like I said, I've been to the coastal side with, where Savannah is and all, and then you go inland to Atlanta, and Atlanta's quite cool. But again, it's one of them. It's so busy and like a big city that you think. Is, is it, it a bit dangerous? Um, I felt I felt okay. Yeah. Mm. Um, but I went into I went into a nightclub there <laughs> with uh, you know my mate Rob, um, mm. who's who's also a white guy. And we were the only two white guys in the nightclub. Oh, really? And it was one of them where the whole music stopped and everyone was staring at us. And they must have thought, this guy's either crazy. Or he has no idea <laughs> where he is. Or yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, hello. <laughs> <laughs> and that was their reaction. Everyone just burst out laughing. And we had a, we had a great time. You know, it was yeah. just an absolutely brilliant time. But yeah, it was quite funny. <laughs> Hello and goodbye. It's one of those words that have several meanings, just like 
dude and the F word. Hawaii is in the middle Pacific Ocean and it is the other state that does not share a border with any other US state. It is in the middle of the ocean and that's why. Hawaii is obviously another state that has amazing beaches. Its main industry is tourism and it's also where a lot of retirees that have a good amount of money go to spend their gold. Isn't it one of the furthest places where you could go? Yeah, for, uh, for, for the USA would travel. be. Or no, around. like from England. Hawaii. Um, I don't know because New Zealand's far. No, but it's, what, it's what's up thought, there. Like, it's literally... I would have thought New Zealand's probably the furthest place we could go from here. What's yeah. the furthest yeah. state we could travel to from here? Hawaii. Hawaii, Hawaii yeah. Because yeah. you got to go to the West Coast and then from the West Coast it's five hours. Yeah. Is it? Minimum. And it takes about ten hours to get to the... West Coast. We've got yeah. more than that probably. Oh probably yeah, twelve. Yeah, well it's seven hours to the East Coast. Yeah, um, so like so twelve, maybe thirteen, more. To the seven hours, fifty, something like that. I mean, it's gorgeous though. We're like, I'd love to go. Mm. Golden years. Most people think Hawaii only has like five to eight islands. Hawaii is actually made up of 137 islands. Now, eight of them are considered major islands, and seven of the major islands have somewhat of a population. One island hasn't had any permanent residents since 1940. They also have 13 minor islands, which really don't have anyone living on them, and a whole bunch of atolls, reefs, and rocks sticking out of the ocean that they consider islands and part of the Hawaiian chain. Number 39, Idaho. Idaho is known as the gem state, and it is one of those places everyone's been moving to over the last decade. Remember how I said people are flooding out of California earlier? A lot of them are going to Idaho. Now, the United States is broken up into several different regions, and there's one called the Pacific Northwest, which has Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, even though Idaho doesn't touch the Pacific Ocean. Idaho's biggest city is Boise. If you call it Boise, it makes them angry. It's Boise. 38, Illinois. Illinois is in the- I remember that one because I said Boise. Boise. <laughs> <laughs> All you have to remember now is Boise from Only Fools and Horses. Yeah. Boise, Boise. Upper Midwest, and this is where they keep the big city of Chicago. It's in the northeast side of the state on Lake Michigan. There's a lot of things going on in Illinois, but all anyone really knows about Illinois, it's Chicago. Number 37, Indiana. Indiana is mostly farmland. They have Indianapolis right in the middle of the state, and that's where they have a big race every year. Actually, they have a few races there at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Indiana is college basketball. If you like basketball, you already know where Indiana is because a lot of the people there live and breathe college basketball or basketball in general. They call themselves Hoosiers. 36, Iowa. Iowa is where we grow most of our corn. Well, maybe not most of it. They, we grow a lot of it. It's just kind of known for their corn. It's also kind of known for its boredom. They do have a couple good-sized cities, Sioux City and Des Moines. It's also considered one of the most boring states. And if you're married and want to settle down and raise a family, boring is sometimes good. Number 35, Kansas. Staying in the Midwest, we have Kansas. They call themselves Jayhawks. Kansas is a lot like Iowa. It's, you know, a great place to raise a family, but it's kind of boring. Their biggest city isn't really even in their state. It's Kansas City, with a majority of Kansas City being in Missouri. But that area on the Kansas side does have one of the best suburbs in the nation, Overland Park, Kansas. They also have Topeka and Wichita, but nobody knows where those really are, even though they really are there. I promise you. Kansas is also where Dorothy got her start from the book and the movie, The Wizard of Oz. Number 34, Kentucky. Kentucky is a southeastern state that is bordered by the Ohio River to the north and the Appalachian Mountains to the east. It's not a deep south state. It is a southern state. It's not deep south, though. It's sort of like a border state between the Midwest and the south. I've always found Kentucky to be a little strange in a few different ways. They have some incredible universities, but at the same time, they always seem to show up in lists about the worst states for adult literacy. It is also home to the Kentucky Derby, which is held at Churchill Downs on the first Sunday in May. This is like a big event, not just there, for the entire country. And it's not just the race, it's like a two week festival. For some reason, people always seem to think that their state capital is Lexington. Horse racing. Yeah. Yeah. It's where it's where Carol lives. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah they, they live in Lexington, um, or near there, and they're big into the horse racing. Yeah. And, uh, horse racing is quite big over here. Jess, you, Jess, did you ever go? Well, that's where I was, I was going to go this year, but it wasn't at Churchill Downs this year, the uh, Kentucky Derby. Uh, is that another, I think they move it around race, different race courses. Oh, really? um, but when I was thinking about going, it was coming up very quickly, mm. sort of thing, so we didn't bother. Um, so we may, we'll definitely fit it in, we'll definitely go, because Cara's there with, with Rocco, so mm. we'll go and uh, say hello. 
It is not. It's Frankfurt. 33, Louisiana. Louisiana has a bunch of nicknames, but the one that most people know it by is the Pelican State. This is where you'll find cities like Baton Rouge and New Orleans. It's also where the Mississippi River ends right before it flows into the Gulf of Mexico. It's got a lot of history and a whole bunch of poverty. Keep that in mind if you decide to go visit. 32, Maine. Maine is a New England state. It is the most northeastern state we have here in the U.S. Maine is known as the pine tree state, and they got a lot of pine trees and a lot of open land. They are ranked 39th in size and 42nd in population. Their capital is Augusta, and their largest city is Portland. 39th in size? I thought they would have been, like, one of the bigger ones. No, I thought Maine would have been, like, at least 45 above. Quite a big state, Maine. Is it? Yeah, it's right in the northeast, right, right before you get to Canada. No, I know it's where I know where it is yeah. and stuff, but I thought it would be a lot smaller. I, thought, I wouldn't have put ten states to be smaller than it. Uh, no, I thought it'd be higher. I yeah, be that's big, what I'm it's saying. Quite a big state. Yeah. Oh wait, what? I thought it'd be like it'd say it's thirty nine biggest state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. out of fifty. I, yeah. thought so higher, like up, I thought it'd be higher up than that. Really? Mm -hmm. I thought it was quite a big state. It's kind mm -hmm. of like just quite long, isn't it? And what's the weather like? Uh, what outside now? Uh, oh, there. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's. Well, yeah, I think you got four seasons. Yeah. I think yeah. The winters could be brutal, and then you get a nice spring, mm. autumn, fall, nice, and some quite warm summers. That's what I'd like. Mm. Actually, out here in Portland, Oregon, if you've never heard this before, that is how we got the name Portland, Oregon. Two businessmen from back east decided they needed to name this little camp that had set up around their trading post. Each wanted to name it after their hometown. They flipped a coin, and the guy from Portland, Maine won, and he named it Portland, Oregon. We were a coin toss away from being Boston, Oregon. 31, Maryland. Most people not from the United States really don't know much about Maryland. I mean, even if you're from the United States, you probably don't know much about it past this is where Baltimore is. If you look at the map, Maryland and Delaware to a degree looks like they just kind of threw these states together as an afterthought. Annapolis Maybe some landowner was all, I want my own state. What's so nice? Annapolis. Annapolis. It's called Annapolis, yeah. What is that? It's like, uh, I went there, it was, um, I was doing, uh, I was actually on tour with one of the football clubs, Crystal Palace, mm. and we stayed in Annapolis and we played at the... Um, I think it's the Army and Navy Stadium, not not far from there. Oh, really? But it's like a naval like yard uh, or naval base. Mm. But it's got really quaint, like village and villagey sort of feel towards it. It's mm. really nice. Annapolis is nice. Mm. Yeah. I, I, when he said before, he was like, "You don't know anything other than Maryland and Baltimore, of, of, other than where that's where Baltimore is." <laughs> that's so <laughs> true. To it's quite funny this guy. So Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Virginia gave a little piece each of their states. Like, here, take this land. We're not using it. Shut up. Maryland is known as a mid-Atlantic state that has got a whole bunch of waterways, coastline, and the Chesapeake Bay. The border of Maryland in the northern part is defined by the Potomac River. And there's one section where the state is so thin up near Hancock that you could walk from West Virginia through Maryland into Pennsylvania in less than an hour. If your gout's acting up, might be two hours. Number 30, Massachusetts. Massachusetts is where Boston is and where you'll find Harvard. Harvard, of course, being an Ivy League school and considered by most to be one of the best in the nation. I was in the army with a guy from Boston and he always just said, I never understood why he's all Harvard, the big lie. I don't know. I think it's a local thing. I don't know. But he did it in this country club voice. It was like Harvard, the big lie. It was ridiculous. Massachusetts isn't a terribly large state. It's actually ranked 40. 44th in the nation. When it comes to population, they're ranked 15th with about 7 million residents. And they're second in the nation when it comes to median household income. This state makes a lot of money, even though it's not that big. Depending on the year, their economy is usually in the top five for the United States. Always like number three, four, or five, something like that. So if you want to go to school here, it's a good idea. It's expensive. And if you're looking to get a good paying job, probably look here also. And if you ever call it a state, keep in mind it's a commonwealth, not a state. There's a little bit of a difference, nothing major. In a lot of different things, we say we have 50 states. In reality, we have a few that are commonwealths. If you do move to Massachusetts, keep in mind, they have a very strange accent. I shouldn't say strange. It's just very noticeable, especially if you're in the Boston area. 
<laughs> 29, Michigan. Michigan is known as the Great Lakes State, the Wolverine State. It's also known as the Mitten State, the Water Wonderland State, or Winter Wonderland State. It's got a lot of nicknames. And it's home to what most people consider the worst major city in the United States, Detroit. The rural parts and small towns are great. Detroit and Flint and a couple other places just are really bad. I did a whole video on how Detroit got to where it is today. I'll leave a link down below. Michigan is ranked 10th in population with about 10 million residents, and it's ranked 11th in size. They have brutally cold winters and nice summers and springs if you could stand the mosquitoes. 28, Minnesota. Minnesota is a lot like Michigan, probably a little bit colder, and they don't have Detroit. Beautiful summers and springs, winters and fall can be brutal but it is a beautiful state in the rural areas. Wonderful people in Minnesota. 27, Mississippi. Mississippi is, by most people's account, the worst state in the United States. They have the worst state capital of Jackson, Mississippi, and they lead the nation in so many things that are negative, I don't know where to begin, but probably the one that sticks out the most, poverty. That's right, the Magnolia State has the worst poverty in the country. If you don't need to go to Mississippi, don't go to Mississippi. 26, Missouri. Missouri is a state that is often overlooked. It's pretty close to being the middle of the country and it's two largest cities they have to share with other states. Kansas City is in Missouri and it's in Kansas. Then you have St. Louis, Missouri with a metro area that goes into Illinois with East St. Louis. It does have one of my favorite places to go visit and that is Lake of the Ozarks. It's right in the middle of the state. 25, Montana. If you're from another country and you wanna see what the Old West was like, go to Montana. It's the closest you're gonna get to how the Old West was. Wyoming's pretty close also. They got a lot of open land and it's beautiful in most areas. Kinda gotta be a tough person to live in Montana. 24, Nebraska. Nebraska is just like Kansas and Iowa. Boring, but a great place to raise a family. Number 23, Nevada. Nevada's not a great place to raise a family, according to just about every survey that's ever been taken. If you're not from the United States and you've never heard of Nevada, it's where we keep Las Vegas. Yes, Las Vegas is the largest city. Well, the metro area of Las Vegas is the major metro area in Nevada. Nevada is a good sized state. It's actually the seventh largest in the United States, but it's 32nd when it comes to population. That's because they only have a few metro areas like Las Vegas, Laughlin, and Reno, and the rest the state is desert that not many people would want to live in and not many people get the chance to live in it because most of this state is owned by the federal government. 22, New Hampshire. New Hampshire is a great state. I love New Hampshire. It's right next to one of my favorite states, which is Vermont. These two states are very similar, along with Maine, because they are the safest states in the United States. They're always like one, two, or three. New Hampshire is beautiful and safe if you want to go there for college or relocate. 21, New Jersey. New Jersey, you know, it's a strange state. The people there aren't really obnoxious and rude as they seem. It's just the way they are. They sort of remind me of Russians. If you don't know the Russian language. You better watch, you better watch what he says. That's what he's saying here, yeah, 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 I'm gonna get you. <laughs> New Jersey, New uh, Jersey, I'm gonna, Jersey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find you. Right. Language, when you hear them speak, you think they're angry, at least from a Western point of view. New Jersey's like that too. They sound like they're getting aggressive when really they're just talking to you. New Jersey has some nice coastal areas and some really nice rural areas on the inside of the state, but they have a lot of really bad big cities. Stay out of the big cities, it's a great place to live. Number 20, New Mexico. New Mexico is pretty close to Mississippi when it comes to poverty. New Mexico's got some problems and most of it stems from they just don't have a lot of jobs. But if you like the desert, it's hard to find one as beautiful as New Mexico. 19, New York State. New York is a very interesting state because most people not from the country don't realize that New York City is not the entire state. New York City has about three quarters of the people of New York State, but it only has about a fifth of the land. It is known as the Empire State and it is a melting pot. That's why most people coming from other countries, one of the first places they hear they should move to is New York or New York City. You will find every creed, race, sexual orientation, religion, mental disorder, and profession in New York. 18, North Carolina. North Carolina is where the Wright brothers flew for the first time. They say it was Kitty Hawk, but really it was a place called Kill Devil Hill. North Carolina has some amazing cities like Raleigh, Durham, Charlotte, and of course, not a city, but they have the Outer Banks, which is beautiful. It is known as the Tar Heel State. I'd get into it, but there's several different reasons they call it that, and it's just a really long story. 
Look it up, it's interesting. 17, North Dakota. North Dakota is a strange state. It's one of our most northern states, and it's really never caught on. They have a couple places that have some population, but for the most part, it's a state that's got a lot of open land. Now, I say it's never really caught on. There's never been a major migration there. They've had little spurts when they started working the oil fields some years back, but it's never been a sustained migration. North Dakota is known for that open land and brutal winters. 16. Ohio The Buckeye State is a state that's been on decline for about 30 years now. Ohio is home to one of the most depressing cities in the United States, which is Cleveland, which is also home to my favorite football team. Ohio only has four or five major cities. You got Cleveland, Col I didn't realize he was a Browns fan, that's unlucky for him. Do you know what's even worse though, if Cleveland's like the most depressing city in the USA? And he called themselves the Browns. <laughs> it's almost depressing color, isn't know, it? Yeah. yeah. They're not helping themselves, are they? No. Columbus, Cincinnati, Toledo, and Dayton. And of them, only Columbus is the one you want to live in. If you like football, it's a great place to live. They're big on college football and the NFL. They actually have the NFL Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. 15, Oklahoma. Oklahoma is right above Texas. And if you talk to someone from Oklahoma, they say they're just like Texas. And if you talk to someone from Texas, they'll say Oklahoma wishes it was a lot like Texas. This comedian I saw years ago said that he used to live in Oklahoma and they should change their welcome sign at the state line. Instead of welcome to Oklahoma, the Sooner State, it should just be a picture of a cop going, nothing to see here, folks. Keep moving. Yeah, Oklahoma is not the greatest place. Number 14, Oregon. Oregon's a state that used to be a lot better. For many years, it was one of the most moved to states. It's beautiful, outdoor activities, amazing forests, mountains, lakes, rivers, streams. We got water everywhere. These days, we got problems everywhere, and most of those problems everywhere are everywhere around Portland, Oregon, the largest city in the state. The rest of the state, though, is beautiful, and you can't deny that. Lucky number 13 is Pennsylvania, one of my favorite states. Pennsylvania is in the northeastern part of the United States, right next to Ohio, Maryland, New York, and New Jersey a little bit. It also has a little shoreline of Lake Erie. Pennsylvania shares a lot of the things I love about Oregon. There's water everywhere, forests, creeks, rivers, lakes, everything. Just a beautiful state outside the cities. Pennsylvania has two major cities you've probably heard of, Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, and it has a handful of pretty decent smaller towns or cities, Harrisburg, Allentown, Scranton. Scranton's not the greatest, but still. And it's also home to my favorite small town in America, Honesdale. Number 12, Rhode Island, or Little Rhodey. That's its nickname. It is the smallest state we have. It is ranked 50th in... I just want to go back to Pennsylvania. I had a friend, there's a town in Pennsylvania called Jim Thorpe. Yeah. Which was named after an athlete. Um, I think he was an athlete, he might have been a footballer. He was a, he was, he was a sports person from Pennsylvania. They named the town after him called Jim Thorpe. Oh, really? Now, I went to, to go to Jim Thorpe with my mate from the UK called Jim Thorpe. And I took him there. And we went in there. He's got a story about everything. <laughs> Listen to this, right? So, <laughs> me, and Jim, me and Jim went over there. And we went in a, in, a, in a diner in Jim Thorpe called the Jim Thorpe Diner, yeah. right? And keep in mind, he's called Jim Thorpe. The Does guy he know went, this, though? No, we took him there. I took him there. He was coming over. No, but when, when, you, when you took him there, you were like, we're he going to a place going, called yeah, Jim knew, Thorpe. He knew, oh, yeah. he knew that's where we were going, yeah. And uh, we went there, and uh, he went in the Jim Thorpe Diner, had the Jim Thorpe Burger, right? The, the Jim Thorpe Special Web, and then paid with his credit card that said Jim Thorpe. Did they, did they yeah. notice? Oh, yeah, he got, he got like a hero's welcome. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, they loved it. Yeah, he was all, did you get a free lunch? He was, proper, he was proper, like, jokey. He was all like, yeah, no, yeah, 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 it was good. It was it was brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. What would you say the best city in Pennsylvania is? Philadelphia or Pittsburgh? I've never been to Pittsburgh. Um, so I, I see a lot of people saying it's like one of the most underrated cities in Pittsburgh. America. Yeah. Yeah. We've got some great sports teams. That's why I'd like it. I like going there just for the sports. Um, but again, so is Philadelphia. So, and I've been in Philadelphia a bunch of times, and the Philly cheesesteak takes me to Philadelphia because <laughs> it's, it's, it's just Your the best, the food, best food. It? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the best food on the planet. And uh, that's why I like Philadelphia. But yeah, that's my story of Pennsylvania. Yeah. Anyway, Jim Thorpe. That's a good one. Mm. In size, meaning it is the absolute smallest, it's also 45th in population. But when it comes to population density, they're second in the nation. Rhode Island's a great place to be if you like seafood. Their other nickname, which is their official nickname, is the Ocean State. Number 11, South Carolina. Over the last handful of years, South Carolina has kind of grown on me. They've got some great cities and a lot of history. Charleston's a perfect example. Most people just think about Myrtle Beach because it's a great place to go on vacation. Dolphin. Myrtle Beach ain't that great. The beaches are cool, the city, not so much. Columbia is okay and so is Greenville, but if I was moving to South Carolina, I would definitely choose Charleston. 
Number 10, South Dakota. South Dakota is a lot like North Dakota, just completely different. They actually have terrain features. Really, the only thing they have in common is a border and the word Dakota. South Dakota is where you find Mount Rushmore, which is that monument carved into a mountainside of president's heads. If you're not from the United States, those heads are Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Teddy Roosevelt. They got room for more heads, but nobody can really agree on who else should go up there. I think there's strong arguments for Reagan, FDR, and Kennedy. South Dakota is a great state if you like doing things outdoors. Number nine, Tennessee. Tennessee is another amazing state with a lot of great history. It's got some pretty cool cities too. Knoxville, Nashville, Memphis. Memphis ain't that great. You gotta stay out of it, but Beale Street's pretty cool. It's kind of dangerous. The rest of the state is pretty good. Number eight, Texas. Texas is another state that's been built on oil. These days, it's just an all around energy state. Oil still plays a big part and so does finance. A lot of banking and stuff like that goes on in Texas. It's not all cowboy hats and cowboy boots. Well, at least not cowboy hats. Cowboy boots, it's like everyone in Texas has to own a pair. Texas is one of the most moved to states we have right now. Has been for about a decade. One of my first experiences of going out in, um, when I arrived in Houston, um, mm. there was a guy down there called Don who, who, who I knew he was, a, he was a competitor in our industry, but he wanted to take me under his wing because he worked with us in different countries. And he said to me, I'll take you to meet some people from the oil industry and do, do the intro with you and all. So I was like, that's great. So he said, pick me up tomorrow sort of thing or we'll meet here. And I turned up in like, you know, shirt, tie, suit, in typical English sort of style. Yeah. So I had to go, he had a shirt on, right? <laughs> like a polo shirt, a pair of shorts. Braces. No, he had a pair of shorts, a pair of cowboy boots. <laughs> <laughs> I just looked at him, I was like, what are we doing here? What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> like, this ain't going to work. <laughs> anyway, he turned, out, he turned out to be good friends and he was quite well. He was a big influence in, yeah. uh, in Houston for me. Love that. Number seven, Utah. Utah is a state that was pretty much founded by Mormon settlers. I know they were heading west. I don't know really why they stopped in Utah, other than their leader decided it was a good place. I don't know if he confused the Great Salt Lake with the Pacific Ocean. I know they have different stories, but I think he got here and said, there it is, the Pacific Ocean. A couple years later, someone went all the way around the lake and said, that's not the Pacific Ocean. And I'm sure he played it off with, I meant to do that. Utah's a great state to live in. Just keep in mind, there is a serious Mormon influence here to this day. I don't want to say they control the state, but they kind of control the state. Number six, Vermont. Vermont is another one of my favorite states. It's up there next to New Hampshire and Maine, and it is one of the three safest states we have. Like I said earlier, every year there's a new study, and they're either one, two, or three. I think Maine right now is the safest. Vermont's number two, New Hampshire's number three. So basically that northeast New England area is the safest place to live. Yeah, it's beautiful, mate. It's, it's, we, we used to go to Vermont quite a lot, um, for like weekend breaks and stuff like that, and especially into the north. We'd go northeast in general. Yeah. Then up to like uh, Connecticut, uh, Massachusetts... New, New, uh, New Hampshire, Maine, and uh, but Vermont's really spectacular, especially in the fall. Best out of the lot. It's, it's really nice. Uh, I'm not sure it's the best out of the lot, but it is. It's spectacular. I, I just love going different places. Yeah, and that was one of the, that was one of my favorite places to go. Mm. Vermont is beautiful and safe and a great place to live. Got to deal with some pretty harsh winters, but other than that, it's a great place to live. Number five, Virginia. Virginia is one of those states that you always think is about to have a big boom, you know, and people just start moving there. I mean, it's a steady trickle, but never that heavy migration like Idaho, Texas, and Colorado have seen. Great universities and a lot of work. Number four, Washington State. Now, if you're not from this country, you may not know, we have Washington, D.C., which is the headquarters or the capital of the United States. And that's on the East Coast. Washington State is where you'll find Seattle. And that's on the Western side of the state. If you take Alaska out of the equation, it is the most Northwestern state we have. Right up there against Canada. Number three, West Virginia. West Virginia is just a little west of Washington, D.C. And it's kind of north and west of Virginia. It's right there in the middle of the country amongst all these beautiful mountains. It's a beautiful state, but the state's fallen on hard times since the coal industry started fading away. The people are great. The land is beautiful. They just have some problems about employment, poverty, and they were one of the worst hit by the opioid crisis. It is one of the cheapest states to live in. If you could bring a job like a remote worker or you're retired, this is a great place to save some money and get ahead. It just comes with some challenges. Number the only thing I think about when I hear West Virginia is that song. West Virginia. Con con like country take roads. your own country roads, yeah, every time. 
We've been, yeah. we, we drove through West Virginia, stopped off a little bit in the Blue Ridge Mountains and all around there, and it's, it is a beautiful Shenandoah state. River. Also, Shenandoah River, all around there, yeah. And uh, what I found is, I've seen a video on like the, the, the poverty, what he's talking about there, and people who live off grid and all that kind of stuff. But one, one of the things I said, even though you live in poverty, you can still have a little bit of pride in what you do. You know, you're living in a caravan in the middle of nowhere, or a, a trailer in the middle of nowhere, and there was shit all over the place. Mm. And I'm like, pick it up and put it in a bin. Don't just live in that. You don't have to live like that just because you, you're in that situation. And it was that's what put me off West Virginia. Mm. But it's also, uh, I think uh, that's where Carmen went to college, wasn't it, West Virginia? I'm that's how we got sure. into that's how we got into be uh, into Matt Mountaineers fans. Oh really? Is that Carmen how, went oh, to yeah, college. Yeah, yeah. We went to the military college up there. Yeah. yeah to Wisconsin. Wisconsin is a great state, and in my opinion, probably one of the top three states to raise a family in. The entire state, it's like that. I mean, they don't have any crime outside of Milwaukee, which is their biggest city. I mean, little crime, nothing major. Drinking and driving is probably one of their biggest crimes there. Wisconsin is beautiful, very rural, and a lot of places to fish and hike, sit on a dock and drink and stare at the water. All right, we got one more to go. If you're looking to move to another state, there's a really cool website called Home and Money. They could help you get in contact with a real estate agent in any part of the country you want to move to. They also have some other things like mortgage calculator and things like that on the website to help you if you're looking to buy a new home. All right. Do you know? What was the last one? Um, West Virginia. No, it it was uh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin, yeah. So it'd be a... It'll be a W or is it? It's alphabetical order, isn't it? Wyoming. Wyoming. That's the one. <laughs> On to number one. And number one, Wyoming. Wyoming is a very interesting state. They're a lot like Montana with the whole cowboy, rough living type thing. It's a big state, actually ranked 10th in the nation, but they don't have many people. They are the least populated state. They come in 50th. They only have 576,000 residents. Probably a little bit more than that or a little bit less. That's the 2020 numbers. My understanding is they gained some in 2021, but lost some in 2022. Wyoming is surrounded by Utah, Colorado, Nebraska, Nebraska, South Dakota, and Montana. Most of the state is flat, except on the western side of the state where you'll find the Rocky Mountains. Wyoming's another state that has a few nicknames, the Equality State, that's the official one. They're also known as the Cowboy State and Big Wyoming. If you don't like living around a bunch of people and you like the outdoors, Wyoming's a solid choice. Hmm. All Seems right, big, that's today's video. Hope probably, a, probably a boring, the most boring state though, eh? It looks a bit remote for me. It's great scenery, and I like to see scenery. <laughs> Occasionally, but it's only somewhere you somewhere you'd, you'd maybe want to drive past, drive through. Mm. Yeah, maybe go on a little like two little day hike, away. two day like uh, camp out sort yeah. of thing, mm. and then get back into civilization. Yeah, <laughs> where you sort of like hit the big cities again. And yeah. I mean, some of the big cities I fancy going to have not been yet. I mean, uh, New Orleans, pass through, not really been. Mm. Milwaukee, it's been a bit of time in Milwaukee. Um, Definitely fancy all up there, Michigan and uh, uh, and Wisconsin, sort of like in that sort of area. Sort of like I don't know if it's to go spring or fall. I think summer might be a little bit too warm, humid type thing. So mm. yeah, definitely going to the USA this year though. Oh really? Yeah, we're just waiting for a few things to happen at work here, and then I'm off. <laughs> Once things are settled here, doing what we're doing, Decent. and everyone's, everyone's happy, Decent. and everyone's calm for a couple of weeks, and I can shoot. Yeah, yeah, and that's what stress I'm free. Jet off stress somewhere. free. Stress free. Yeah, and. Uh, I'm just, uh, I don't know, we're, we're probably thinking about heading to Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah, Gainer and myself, so. Nice. She's always wanted to do, do Watch Nashville. Watch out for us. Yeah, she loves the country yeah. music, yeah. doesn't she? Yeah. So, yeah, so, it's, uh, so I've tripped to Nashville and it's done then. You know, but we, we, we'll, be doing, we'll be doing somewhere on the East Coast on the same trip, so probably Boston. So Boston, Massachusetts, nice place, then down Boston. to Nashville. Nashville, back over to the East Coast, maybe mm-hmm. somewhere like Atlanta, and then back home. Yeah. Decent. Sounds man. lovely. Nice. So, there you go. Anyway, it was uh, interesting, that one. Interesting. It was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was. You learned yeah. something new there yeah. about a few of the states. On every state, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Well, Hope you guys enjoyed it too. Don't forget to subscribe. It is free. Yes. And it does help us. Yes. And we will catch you on the next one. Cheers. Bye. Cheers.